everyone. In this video, we will discuss how to choose a price statistical test for research. While conducting research, some researchers may face problems in selecting the appropriate statistical test for their research. Using a right statistical test would ensure the research findings are valid and reliable. The following are some examples of using inappropriate statistical tests in data analysis. In the first example, a research was conducted to examine gender difference in learning motivation. In this example, the independent variables gender has two categories, male and female. The dependent variable is an ordinary data with one to five points like a skill. The statistical test, the independent sample t test, is not appropriate for this research. This is because one of the assumptions of independent sample t test is the data of the dependent variable is either in interval or ratio skill. In the second example, a research was conducted to examine correlation between motivation and attitude. The Pearson correlation test is not appropriate due to both IV and DV are in ordinary data with like a skill. This is because the Pearson correlation test requires both the IV and DV are in skill data, either in interval or ratio skill. In the third example, a research was conducted to examine the influence of gender, age group, race, and education background on performance. The four independent variables are categorical data in nominal and ordinal skills, and the dependent variable performance is in skill data. Using the multiple linear regression test is not suitable because the test requires both IVs and DVs are in skill data. The determination of statistical tests should be done based on research design and type of data of the IV and DV. In terms of research design, in this video, we will discuss the selection of basic statistical tests for causal comparative research design, correlational research design, causal relationship research design, and experimental designs. But before that, we need to understand the type of data. Understand the type of data will help us to select the right statistical test for our research. In statistics, we have three types of data. The first type is nominal data. A dominant data is the data that has categories of groups of data. An example of a nominal data is gender with two categories of data, male and female. Male is labeled at 1 and female is labeled as 2. We can also label 1 equal to female and 2 equal to male. There is no fixed rank in nominal data that male must be labeled 1 and female must be labeled 2. In another example, climate change phenomenon, we can rearrange the four categories. For example, 1 equal to fires, 2 equal to flood, 3 equal to pollution, and 4 equal to drought. This is because there is no fixed range for nominal data. The second data type is ordinal data. Ordinal data has categories like nominal data, but the categories must be arranged into fixed order. 
An example of ordinary data is Likert scale. The five categories are arranged in fixed orders from negative agreement to positive agreement. The second example is income. It has three categories arranged from the lowest income to the highest income. The third example is attitude. It has three categories range from negative attitude, neutral to positive attitude. Scale data does not have categories like 1 equal to, 2 equal to, and 3 equal to, and so on. This means each data of scale data is a true value and not a label. Two types of scale data are interval data and ratio data. An example of interval data is temperature. Interval data has negative and positive values like negative 5 degrees Celsius, 13 Celsius, and so on. For ratio data, all the data are positive values, and the lowest skills for the data is zero. We call the zero in ratio skill as a true zero. As a summary, nominal skill has categories of data with no fixed order. Ordinary data has categories of data that are ranked. Interval data has negative values and ratio data only has positive values with a true zero. In statistics, both interval and ratio data are skewed data. After learning type of data, we will learn the basic statistical test that appropriate for our research design and research data. For causal comparative design, the IV is connected with the DV with a single headed arrow. If the IV is a nominal data with two categories and the DV is a skill data, we should use the independent sample t test. This is because the t-test is a parametric test that requires the DV to be a skill data. For example, the independent sample t-test is used to compare creativity score between male group and female group. In this case, the IV is gender with two categories, male and female. The t-test will help researchers to examine whether there is a difference between male and female in creativity score. To learn step-by-step -step data analysis using SPSS for the t-test, you can click the link below this video. You can also download the example research data for practice after watching the video. If the IV is a nominal data with two groups, but the DV is an ordinary data, for example, a Likert skill data, then we should use the man whitney u test. For example, to compare motivation level between male group and female groups. An example of ordinary data for motivation level is 1 equal to very low, 2 equal to low, 3 equal to moderate, 4 equal to high, and 5 equal to very high. In this case, the main witness U test is a non-parameter test used to compare motivation level between the two gender groups. If the IV have more than two groups and the DV is a skill data, then we should use an one-way ANOVA test. For example, comparing creativity score between three age groups. However, if the DV is an ordinary skill, to compare more than two groups, we need to use the classical Warris hashtag. In this example, we compare motivation levels between three age groups using the classical Warris test. 
In another situation where both IV and DB are in nominal data, we will use the chi-square test of independence. In summary, for closer competitive research design, if the IV is the nominal data with two groups or two categories, and the DB is a skill data, we will use the independent sample t-test. But if the DV is an ordinary data, we need to use the man with new U tag. If the DV is a nominal data, we will use the chi-square tag of independence. However, if the IV has more than two groups, and if the DV is a skill data, we should use the one-way NOA tag. But if the DV is an ordinary data, we will use the classical voice hash test. If the DV is a nominal data, then we should use the chi-square test of independence. After learning the test of kosher comparative design, now we move to the correlational design. In correlational design, two variables are connected by a two-headed arrow. If the two variables are skill data, then we need to use the Pearson correlation test. For example, a research is conducted to examine the correlation between creativity score and mathematics score. We use the Pearson test to analyze the correlation between the two scores. If the two variables are in ordinary data, then we need to use the Spearman rule correlation test. For example, we use the Spearman rule test to analyze correlation between motivation levels and emotion levels. In this case, both motivation levels and emotion levels are ordinary data, for example, with like a skill. If the two variables are in nominal data, then we need to use the Kramer V test. For example, we use the Kramer V test to analyze correlation between two nominal data, gender and race. In summary, in correlational research design, if the two connected variables are in skill data, we should use the Pearson correlation test. If the two variables are in ordinary data, we should use the Spearman rule correlation test. But if the two connected variables are in nominal data, we should use the Kramer V correlation test. Furthermore, to correlate skill data and ordinary data, we can use the Spearman rule test. And to Colorate ordinary data and nominal data, we use the Kramer V test. Now we move to the third research design, the causal relationship design. If there are more than one IV, we use multiple regression tests. If the data of the IVs and DVs are in skill data, we should use the multiple linear regression test. For example, we use the multiple linear regression test to analyze the effect of intelligence score and thinking skill score on performance score. In this case, the three scores are skill data, hence multiple linear regression test is appropriate. 
In multiple linear regression, variables with dichotomy or dummy data, which has two categories data like low and high, yes or no, agree or disagree, can be used at IV. However, if some of the IVs are not in scale data, then the multiple linear regression test is not suitable. In this case, we need to use the logistic regression test, a non-parametric regression test. The binary logistic regression test is used when the DV is a dichotomy nominal data with two categories and the IVs are in any data type. For example, we use the binary logistic regression test to analyze the influence of lifestyle, education level, and smoking habit on quality of life. In this research, the DV quality of life is labeled as one equal to high quality and two equal to low quality. The three IVs can be in any data type either nominal, ordinal, or interval, or ratio skill. Now, we move to the experimental design. The one group pretest test test experimental design involves an experimental group of respondents, where a treatment is given to them in between the pretest and post-test. The experimental data should be measured in scope, in skill data. In this case, we can use the pair sample t test to analyze the effect of the treatment. For example, we use the test to examine the effect of a creative teaching method on performance of a group of special needs students. In this case, the pre-test and post-test are performance score measured before and after treatment is implemented. However, if we compare a treatment group with a control group for the pre- and post-test, the pair sample t-test is not suitable. We can use the ENCOVA test. The ENCOVA test will help us to adjust the pre-test of the control and treatment group so that they are equal before comparing the adjusted post-test score. For example, the ENCOVA test is used to analyze the effect of a creative teaching method on performance of mathematics students. In this case, the treatment is only given to the treatment group. And the data are performance scores of the pretest and post-test of the treatment and control group. In summary, the 12 statistical tests we have discussed above are basic tests of quantitative researchers should know before determining the suitable tests for their research. To learn each of the tests with step-by-step -step data analysis using SPSS and to download the data for self-practice, please click the link below this video. Have a nice day.